Hi everybody, welcome back to part two of four of our choice of sailboats for 100,000 euros or less. I've got two fantastic boats for you today. They're very different from one another so we can get sort of a different perspective of what uses you might get out of them and what you want to, to do. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button. If you haven't seen part one, head over uh, I'll put a link just up here and you can head over there, watch that, and then you'll understand the rules of what we've put in in place for this particular series of sailboats. I'm going to get straight into it today. The choices might surprise you, they might not. Um, the first boat is a Catalina 36 and our second boat is a Beneteau 42cc. What I wanted to try and do is get one that's more cruiser and one more that you can go off liveaboard. I know you could liveaboard both boats but they have their pros and cons as all sailboats do. Just a quick note the boat you're going to see is a Catalina 36 Mark II. Basically it's exactly the same hull and rig as the earlier model introduced in 1982 but they did a few updates like enlarge the um, cockpit area and made a few changes to storage and bits and pieces on the inside. Not a great big deal of difference, doesn't change the sail handling, it just makes the boat more comfortable. Then this model was actually changed out in 2008 for the Catalina 375. I think what we're going to do is get straight into it. Let me know in the comments what you think about both boats and as soon as we got through this one we'll get into the 42 and see where we go from there. Catalina have quite a range of boats but today we're concentrating on the 36 Mark II. Age ranging for these, for say the standard 36 and then later on the Mark II, were built in the late 80s to around 2000. And This gives you plenty of money left in the budget to be able to do any ads on or fixing of whatever you need, changing equipment. The designers were Jerry Douglas and Frank Butler. The Catalina 36 Mark II is a masthead sloop with a reported sail area of 51.56 meters or 555 feet. Not a great deal, but she's only 36 foot and very easy to single hand. Um, this was my finding for a single hander or a boat for a couple especially if you're doing a lot of coastal sailing she's quite fast lovely shape really nice boat to handle and everything generally comes back to the cockpit just forward of the spray hood you'll find that there's a main sheet traveler overall length of this boat is 11.07 meters or 36.3 feet and a waterline length of 9.2 meters which is 30.2 feet and a total beam of 3.6 meters 11.9 feet the displacement of this boat is 6.1 tons and she has a ballast of 2.7 tons with a maximum draft 1.78 meters which is about 5.8 feet with a shallow draft wing kill and a taller rig um, the shallow draft was about 1.35 meters or 4.4 foot which is pretty good there's a lot of room in these boats for such a small craft you'll find that the salon or saloon depending on where you came from come from in the world you have a l shape um, settee and dining table on the port side which is big enough if you add some stools on the other side of the table it's big enough to sit six easily and eight with a squeeze and on the starboard side you have I would like to say this is like a breakfast area or an evening drinks area if it's not so nice outside but there are a couple of single seats and a drop down table and you can actually extend that along once you've dropped the table down to make uh, an extra berth if you want. There's plenty of storage on these boats and the woodwork in these older models was spectacular. The galley is pretty much a standard galley straight down from your on the port side you have twin stainless steel sinks which is always a bonus to have stuff drying off or just to store stuff. A lot of them came with a salt water pump 
standard two gimbal stove fridge or opening top fridge or freezer on the right hand side and then on the left hand side of the gimbal cooker you have once again a fridge or a freezer. These boats came as standard as a two cabin sailboat. Forward you have a really nice V-berth with infill. It's quite cosy for two adults but great for kids. Very light and airy for these older boats and obviously this forward heads is a wet heads. Aft there is actually a very large double cabin. One thing to note by the two armchairs and the folding table by the forward chair is basically your nav area. It's not particularly good um, but for such a size yacht I don't think it's too bad. You have everything you need really for day sailing or coastal cruising. There's a small area to keep paperwork and folded charts. All in all, these are fabulous boats. If you're, you know, you've done a bit of sailing or you're learning to sail, um, you want a day sailor, you want something that's a little bit more grown up, um, it's going to give you a little bit of comfort. All in all, an awesome boat. Let me know what you think in the, pro in the comments below. Two is my favourite. I like the Catalina, as you know, um, but it's not because it's a European built boat or a French boat. It just, for my needs or our needs as a family, is better adapted for what they would consider or Beneteau would consider actually blue water cruising. They were first constructed in early 2000 so 2000 2002 and the only difference with this and there's some slight rule bending here um, you can find them depending on condition from sort of 85,000 euros up to 120,000 euros so there is a slight bending of rules if you don't mind you know hit that like button and you know if you like what we're doing and if you like the boat reviews we've done consider hitting that subscribe button too let's get on board shall we you'll know instantly by the tone of my voice this is the boat of my choice at this price bracket there are a few others you know we could all sort of go out and try and find a smaller Halberg grassy or you know another swan or something but in comparison for what we're doing money wise between the Catalina and this Beneteau 42cc if this is going to be your first step into extended cruising for a couple of weeks or more or even plan that trip you know around the trade winds as long as you're not going all the way up to the the polar caps and things like that these boats are capable of doing it they were really really popular and I'm not surprised the Beneteau 42cc was a very adaptable boat this one has been pretty well set up by somebody that has done a lot of extended cruising before um, and will be at the higher end of the price bracket. The Beneto 40cc were first constructed in 2000 to 2002 and prices will vary but in my opinion with an older model you can find them for around 85 to 95,000 euros, which doesn't give you a lot of money left in your budget. But generally, from a lot of the research I've done and the one I've seen at La Rochelle and down in the south of France, it's normally one owner, they've done extended cruising, they've been really well looked after and modernized over the years. So you really are getting you know, a lot of boat for your money. Beneteau 42cc is a great all-round sailboat for single-handed sailing or with a family. Both the Beneteau and the Catalina, I'd be happy to take both these boats offshore, but I would feel a lot more confident and a lot safer with the Beneteau 42cc, but that's with my experience, you know, with sailing and delivering yachts and so on. The hull type, um, wind kill, it's cutter rigged and an overall length of 13.2 meters, which is about 43.4 feet and a waterline length of 11 meters, which is around the 36 foot mark. The beam on these boats aren't too bad. Um, total beams 3.9 meters, which is 12.83 feet. The displacement of nine tons and a ballast of two and a half tons 
So, you know, average weight for a boat this size and a maximum draft of 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet as standard. Once again, they are solid GRP construction. These boats, depending on, for some reason, and depending on owner specs, I don't know why, um, some of them came with a Volvo 80 horsepower, some of them came with a Yamaha 75 horsepower. Larger fuel tanks on this compared to the Catalina. It's 240 litres of fuel and 540 litres of water. And once again, this depends on original owner's options, but most of the time I've seen them maxed out like this, which once again gives you that extended offshore cruising. Total sail area on these is 194 square metres, consisting of your main at 40.8 metres, uh, a Genoa at 48 metres or 50 metres once again depending on owner and um, specs and a SPI at 106 square metres. Most of the 42 cc's that I've seen have come, owners have already put a stainless steel solar arch or something like that on them, there are very few that haven't. The thing that I like in the aft cockpit area, you have a really big space to put out some deck chairs or sunbathe and the way that the a bathing platform with a ladder gives you really nice access in and out of the water. There are generally two really large lazarettes aft and you'll see the emerg emergency steering point in the middle. Great non-slip on the decks, always plenty of hand holders and you have a, a aft main sheet traveller which is awesome. Folding wheel on the helm generally and a step over once again centre cockpit and it's an older centre cockpit. So it's a slightly smaller space but relatively comfortable. I've been out on a couple now and we've had sort of four of us in there comfortably six is a bit of a squeeze when the wheel is folded those that are sat behind uh, a bit like a spare wheel but generally really comfortable you normally have two winches forwards this one only has a single and a couple of winches aft by your wheel and all your electronics and engine controls are on the binnacle which is brilliant you don't have to go anywhere to adjust anything and maneuver your boat forward by the companion way is your start stop and emergency stop for the engine this boat we're looking at as you can see is pretty well set up it's got a chain counter on the binnacle which is awesome and a chart plotter and you'll see that further forward there are a couple of repeaters it's your engine controls and battery and other bits and pieces this boat's been pretty well looked after and it will be at the higher end of the budget You'll notice I'm talking more about this than I did with the Catalina, um, but out of the two, this would be my choice with the slightly larger budget. These non-slips on the step were actually, I assume, an addition for the owner. Starboard size is standard with all of these. You have your main switches just down from the companionway, which is really handy for popping on or turning off your navigation light, lights, batteries, and all that sort of stuff. There are plenty of there is plenty of storage on these boats, loads of light, and the woodwork is as it is with all these boats that were built sort of before 2005 or 2010. The woodwork is excellent and generally all done in house by most of the boat manufacturers. Port side, you have a proper, what I would consider a proper navigation desk, somewhere big enough to put all your charts and paperwork. VHF radio, um, there is a stereo there, repeaters. There's plenty of space for all the bits and pieces that, that you want. You know, you can hook up a monitor for a computer screen. Deck step mast. Um, Pros and cons, let me know in the comments below what you think about deck step masks. There are some people that are, uh, you know, kill step is the best, or some deck step is the best. Let me know what you think, um, because I think it'd be an interesting discussion. There is plenty of room under the floor down in the bilges, obviously set with diesel tanks and water tanks as well. These all came pretty much as standard as a two cabin version. So once again, mirroring the Catalina 36 Mark II, two cabins. The difference is forward on the Beneteau, you have a large double 
on the starboard side and a nice sort of chair sofa for your guests or your kids whatever to play in on the port side and they have their own wet heads which I think is absolutely awesome they don't need to come into mum and dad's um, or dad and dad's or mum and mum's you know however you want to put it but I think it's great they have their own bathroom they don't need to bother anybody else coming aft my preferred version of a galley so you'll see these a lot on Halberg Rassies, um, Amels, um, the older Discovery, some swans, oyster and the list goes on there are a lot of boats that have the galley set up this way I think they're brilliant great for bracing yourself against you know if you're on a relatively big sea they're not taking much room up in your saloon okay they could be taking up storage or something else but it's just the way it is and normally they have a handy little hatch for you to pass out a cup of tea to your skipper <laughs> this one's pretty well set out with a standalone fridge um, you can put something else there normally it's a cupboard nice big fiddles on the worktop which is essential a two burner um, gimbaled stove with oven dual stainless steel sinks with salt water and fresh water pumps and a fridge and freezer you can use it just for weekends and so on but Beneteau designed these with something else in mind plenty of opening hatches you can see for a boat this old there is loads of light and storage you have storage all down on the inside microwave oven not something I would go for but you know if the owners installed it they've installed it and then coming into your cabin which is a huge aft cabin you've got a big double bed there are sofas on either side of the bed and plenty of storage for both of you for all your clothes but if you're sailing around the the um Topics. all you need is a bikini it, or nothing at all and for your man whichever way you are a lovely pair of speedos because nobody seems to wear those anymore I don't know why there's loads of room there was enough headroom when we looked around um, one of these as I said before there was enough headroom a little bit of space behind my head and you'll know I'm five eight five nine you know if you're 6162 you'll probably be ducking a bit but there is plenty of headroom the nice thing I like with these once again there's plenty of opening hatches the one we looked at in the vanity in front of the bed actually had a television set up there and you have your own ensuite heads which is a bonus not having to worry about the kids or your guests med med messing yours up separate shower which is important because nobody likes water all over the toilet or the paper or everywhere and the last person that used it forgot to clear it all up absolutely superb boat let me know let me know what you think in the comments below